Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind, to Transform Your Life, the podcast. This is Life Coach Brenna Young, and you're listening to 5-Minute Fridays with Coach Brenna. Today, I want to talk on the topic of self-love. What is self-love? And can you love another if you don't first love yourself? So this is basically why I wanted to talk on this today, because I want to answer this specific question. Because for years, I have been telling people and telling myself that if you can't love another, if you can't first love yourself, because you can't give away what you don't have. Now, that is very true. You can't give away what you don't have. If you don't have love, then you can't love someone. That's what I told myself. But today I am going to debunk that myth because Eckhart Tolle says that when we talk about self-love, we're saying that there are two beings, self and someone else. Because if you're talking about self-love, then you're not talking about being. And being is what we want to be. We don't want to be separate, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, let me back up and give you the definition of self-love. Self-love is defined as love of self or regard for one's own happiness or advantage. It has been conceptualized both as a basic human necessity and as a moral law akin to vanity and selfishness, conceitedness, egotism, and the big one, narcissism, right? We all know people that put themselves first and they don't care about anybody else. Yeah. So... Where is that balance? I grew up thinking that if someone called me selfish, and heaven forbid they call you a narcissist, it was the worst thing possible. Until I understand the concept of self-love and putting yourself first, right? So why do people call you selfish and a narcissist? You know why? It's usually because you are not doing what they want. They think that you're putting yourself first. They think that you should drop everything and cater to their needs. So when you don't do that, they call you selfish. They call you conceited. They call you egotistical and all those different things. Again, it depends on the spectrum of things, right? The common signs of practicing self-love are you put yourself first. You are authentically yourself. You are honest with yourself. You express yourself freely. You say positive things to yourself. You forgive yourself when you mess up, right? You start meeting your own needs and you don't ask for anybody else to meet your needs. You are complete by yourself. You are assertive. You're not letting others take advantage of you or abuse you. That's the big one. When you stop letting people take advantage of you or abuse you, then they call you selfish, right? So you also prioritize your health and your well-being. And that's where a lot of the talk on self-love has been in this particular space. You put yourself first. You put your health first. You put on your mask first before you look after anybody else and you look after your well-being. But Eckhart Tolle teaches that when you talk about loving yourself, it means that you're splitting yourself between you and self. And that means that you're missing the concept of being yourself. If you be yourself, you don't have to love yourself. Because you are not separate from self. So you don't need to love yourself. You don't need to be proud of yourself. You don't need to pat yourself on that back. When you understand that the ripple or waves is part of the ocean and that you are the ripple, 
that is part of the ocean of the universe, you do not separate yourself from the whole, which is that universe. So answer the question, can you love another if you don't first love yourself? The answer is no. It is not necessary to love yourself before you can love another. Because if you're not comfortable with being with yourself when you're alone, you will seek another to complete you. But what will happen is that the need that make you seek another human to complete you will show up in another form in the relationship. Because another person cannot fill the void inside of you. Only you can fill that void by accepting the present moment in whatever form it presents itself and be yourself. When you are in a relationship and you still feel alone, you blame your partner for what giving you for not giving you what you need, right? You call them selfish. You call them narcissistic. You call them emotionally unavailable. Trust me, I've been there. You become needy. But even if your partner, even if you, you're one of the lucky ones that you have a partner that tells you he or she loves you every hour of the day, guess what? If you don't love yourself and if you can't be yourself, you will still feel unloved because you don't love yourself and you don't know how to be yourself. Ever heard a man say, I can't please this woman? <laughs> Will Smith is a classic example of this phenomenon. He said in his autobiography, he spent weeks planning at a surprise 40th birthday party for his wife, Jada. He was very proud of his work. He went to a whole bunch of trouble, even having a, um, a sonogram of her grandmother speak to her and all that. And he expected her to be so grateful and so blown away. And she was pissed because she said that the only reason he did it was so that he could make himself look good and receive the praise. And she missed the love behind the effort. She missed the love that even if he wanted to make himself look good, who don't want to make themselves look good when they're pleasing their partner? Why do you think men buy diamonds and buy you flowers? Because they want to feel good about themselves. But she missed it all. And she was not grateful and she was very unhappy. And he was so hurt by her lack of appreciation that he walked out saying, I can't ever please this woman. He told her if it was possible for her to ever be happy that she should show him. And that was because Jada had a hole in her heart that Will Smith could not fill. She had to fill it herself. She had to find her wholeness by connecting to source, God. So no need to love yourself, feel sorry for yourself, judge yourself, hate yourself. All you need is to be yourself. When you're able to be yourself, you can watch your emotions. You can watch your thoughts. So are you know, you're no longer controlled by them. You see them because you were there with them as a whole person. You watch them pass through you and float away like colored balloons. This is how you practice self-love. And that's by loving the whole you and by being yourself. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Five Minute Fridays with Coach Myrna. I hope that I tickled your concept of self-love. I hope that I showed you that you can be love. You can have love coming out of your pores. So when you do that, you don't have to put self in front of it. You can just be love. <laughs> and when you be love, you're going to have oceans of it to give away. So that is my lesson today. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of 5 Minute Fridays with Coach Myrna. If you're watching this on YouTube, would love for you to subscribe. If you're listening to this on iTunes, would love for you to rate, review, 
and subscribe. So until next time, namaste.